morning, brothers and sisters. What a beautiful day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Wasn't that some pretty neat music that we just had? Thank you to Manly and uh, son William. Uh, there's some really neat story behind that, actually. That's original composition. Uh, but not only that, uh, William is in Boston. Dad is here in Decatur. So together, isn't technology sometimes can really provide us with a great blessing and bring us closer together so that we can share the gifts that God has given us. So we just want to say thank you to Manly and to William and uh, to those folks that created all of this technology and uh, are inviting us into the 21st century, go figure. I uh, would like to offer uh, just kind of a, a bit of an announcement that we are this last week, the last several weeks actually, have been a time of uh, stress, let's say, in our country. And uh, one of those issues, besides the coronavirus, has also been the issue of race relations and uh, police relationships with local communities. Um, we have uh, had some folks that are interested in a, in a small group study that would help us to begin to understand the issues and to uh, see where the Lord might be leading us. Let's put it that way. Um, so if you are interested, I would appreciate, uh, just give me a call. Uh, nearly always on my emails that I send out, my telephone number is there, my email address is there. You have a way of getting in touch. Uh, we will be doing something that uh, we will be able to honor the uh, social distancing and those things. And in fact, it may very well be that we will do something online through a program called Zoom, uh, which many of you are already pretty well acquainted with. So give some thought to prayer, whether you would like to join us. Uh, this is not about finding a lot of guilt and negativity, but it's about trying to understand the issues in a prayerful way. All righty. My friends, will you please join with me in our opening hymn, this old favorite, To God Be the Glory. <laughs> to be forgiven and to forgive, to be freed from sin and to set others free, to tell one another and the world 
God's presence is at hand. Let us worship God. God of wonder, you appeared to Abraham as three persons. You revealed your fullness in your Son, Jesus the Christ. Your Spirit fills your people with hope through the peacemaking cross of Jesus. Gather us as Christ's faithful disciples and empower us with his good news. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite you to be in an attitude of prayer as uh, we have our call to confession. The mystery of God brings the promise of life, but we doubt the Spirit's power to overcome death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son, reveals that nothing is impossible with God. Let us confess our sins and receive new life. Please join with me, my friends, in our prayer of confession. Triune God, Holy Three, Holy One, we confess that we do not know how to look for you. We do not sense your nearness. And if there are angels among us, we are unaware. We do not show the hospitality to strangers that Abraham showed to you. We do not trust that our hardships can be transformed by your Spirit. O covenant keeper, forgive us. Let us laugh with joy because your grace has made peace among us. Send us out with this good news so that others will also receive your blessing through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Christ gave his life to save us from the wrath of God. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Trust the good news of the gospel in Christ Jesus, ours, yours, and my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus gathered the disciples and gave them authority to heal the sick, cast out evil, and proclaim the good news. Let us present our offerings for the mission of the church, bearing witness to the kingdom of God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. harmony. In you, those who sing for joy revel in your glory, and those who cry in pain find comfort in their sorrow. Thank you for being God with us. Thank you for keeping your promises to our faith ancestors and to us. Thank you for coming near to us in your Son, Christ Jesus. Thank you for hope that brings life through the inpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the love you hold up before the world on the cross of Christ our Savior. Even our offerings come from the fruits of your blessings. Praise to you, O God Most High. Amen. This is our time of joys and concerns. Time of prayer. We've got a celebration, first of all, on the 19th of June, which I believe is Thursday, uh, will be Alice Jordan's birthday. So we just want to say happy birthday, Alice, and uh, if some of you folks would uh, 
care to send her a card, I'm sure that she would be glad to hear from her church family. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up Scott White, who is the nephew of Lynn and Linda White. Uh, I had a really dangerous fall this week that uh, broke several bones, and uh, really uh, it's going to take some significant time for him to do healing. So we pray for healing and for strength, both for Scott and for his family and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up again our friends uh, Jane LaRoche from the East Peoria area and just uh, pray for the Holy Spirit to be with her and keep her in comfort and uh, fill her with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up Richard Kaufman again as he continues to uh, uh, kind of recover and, and moving back into life in a normal fashion. Just uh, pray for the Holy Spirit to continue to be with him and give him comfort, strength, and uh, peace. I'd like to add prayers for also for Edwin Wallace, who continues to uh, recover from uh, some surgery. Uh, it'll take some time, but I'm sure that he's doing better. And uh, we just pray that that uh, path continues, and in due time, he'll be back to living life in a really normal fashion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd uh, like to lift up my grandson, Chris. I just pray for the Spirit to protect him and keep him comfortable and uh, bless him with God's presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up the essential workers, the uh, folks that wait on us in many different stores and many different ways. Uh, people that, uh, in all honesty, it's easy for us to overlook and yet they are the people who put themselves in potentially in harm's way with this pandemic. You know, I pray that uh, through this uh, crisis called this, uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19, that we will begin to see people that we normally just don't seem to look at. That may be one of the great blessings that comes out of this. We begin to see our our neighbors and the people that care for us in ways that we so often just take for granted. So protect the essential workers, Lord. Be with them. Protect them from this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd also like to lift up the police officers, rather specifically the police, who have an incredibly difficult time this last couple weeks has been time of protests and time of potential conflict, and we've seen that overflow in some really negative uh, and destructive ways, quite frankly, on both sides of the fence, if you will. Please, Lord God, be with our police officers. Keep them safe. Protect them, Lord. They have an almost an impossible job. And we just pray that uh, they will be able to keep their cool when confronted with conflict and difficulty, and that they will lift up the better angels within them, Lord. We also pray for our communities as we try to find new ways of supporting our police, and also maybe taking some of the impossible tasks away from them in such a way that others who maybe have the training and skills for dealing with painful and difficult situations might take that responsibility upon themselves. Help us, Lord, to find a way through this, not one that de degrades one side or the other, but a way that we can move forward together for everyone's benefit and blessing. Please, Lord God, be with our men and women in blue. We also lift up those who are protesters that are there to make an honest point of something that they believe needs to be changed. It seems that the only way that change takes place, serious change place, takes place in our culture is when people gather together and make their voice known and heard. 
So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd also like to just simply lift up our country, this beautiful country that uh, we all love. Lord God, help us to find ways that we can come together and in our differences of opinion, we can honor and respect each other and we can at the very least agree to disagree. We pray, Lord God, that somehow we can begin to have enough communication that we can find that common area that we all agree on so that we can move together as a nation, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to invite you to take a moment just to meditate upon these prayer requests and those that you have personally for you and for your loved ones. This will just be a moment for silent meditation. Will you please join with me, my friends, in the prayer that Christ Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of redemption, summon us to Sarah's joy, Abraham's wonder, and Paul's confident hope through the work, through the word and work of the Good Shepherd. Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Would you uh, please join with me, friends, in our hymn sing, which is Open My Eyes That I May See. Yeah. 
my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes and scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 through chapter 10 verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the shepherds, cast out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you, uh, you remember a time when you were first learning how to drive? There was a story told by a pastor about uh, his very first experience. And uh, he says to his mother, who was teaching him, how will I know the way? I asked, setting out on my first solo car journey. Don't be silly, she said. We've been going there for years. You'll know it all right away. But I didn't. I recognize many parts of the road, but there is this difference in the world between sitting in the car while someone else makes the decisions about which road to take and doing it yourself. I got lost. Just five miles from my own home, I got lost and had to backtrack and ask someone for directions as though I were a stranger in the area. So. Up until now, Jesus' disciples have been passengers in the car. He's been doing the driving. They've been astonished at what they've seen, but he's made all the decisions, handled all the tricky moments, steered them through the towns and villages, taken the criticisms, and come out in front. Now he's telling them to go out and to do it themselves. It doesn't take much imagination to see how they would feel, would it? What do you want us to do? By ourselves, for heaven's sakes? In today's gospel, Jesus looks at the work that lies ahead of him. He sees vast multitudes in great need. Do you think that was 2020 that he was talking about? He's overwhelmed by the challenge. 
And he turns to his 12 disciples and empowers them to do the very same things that he himself has been doing. Healing, restoration, salvation, work of the kingdom. It's amazing that the Son of God, the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace, turns to air ordinary folks like those 12 disciples. Today, he turns to ordinary folks like us, you and I, and gives us his work to do. Seems to me to be a little bit on the intimidating side when you really stop and think about it. This is one of the most challenging things about Jesus. He picks ordinary people like us to do his world-changing work. Lots of people think the world of Jesus, they admire him, they see him as a great teacher, and even see him as the Son of God. People may believe in Jesus, but I'm guessing most have difficulty believing that Jesus believes in us. We believe in him. Does he believe in us? He turned the work of the kingdom over to us, didn't he? They like Jesus, but they just don't particularly care for those whom Jesus loves. The church is contemporary disciples. Oops, did I say that? How many of you have had some pretty tough experience with people from the church, you know? My wife says, sometimes the most unchristian things that you will encounter will happen at the church. If Jesus is so great and wonderful, how come he picks imperfect souls like you and I to do his work? That's the kind of thing that they really want to know. From the point of view of the church, this is true testimony to the Lordship of Christ, to his remarkable divinity. He is so serenely confident in his mission that he's able to enlist folks like us to do the very same work that he himself does. Wow. Can you believe it? Can you believe in Jesus, but he also believes so much in you? We are the only body that the risen Christ has. That's us, you and I, in this time and in this place, my friends. We are the only plan God has to get back what belongs to God, you and I. Great theologian Karl Barth said that because Christ is the head of the church, the church, the church may become a beggar, it may act like a shopkeeper, it may make itself a harlot, and we know what that means, right? As has happened and still continues to happen. Yet it is always the bride of Jesus Christ. Long ago, when I was in seminary back in the 1990s, I had the opportunity for three winters, January, to go to Florida to a place called Dunklin Memorial Camp. I drove about 10 miles down the straightest sand road I had ever seen in my whole Midwestern life to this camp out in the middle of nowhere. It was a place for men with addiction problems, alcoholics and chemical addictions. It was a treatment center, a sacred place. It really was. And in the church where we went to worship on Sundays, like everybody else, there was over on this corner this beautiful, as you stood back, this beautiful picture of the bride of Christ. The thing that was so neat was that when you got close to the picture, you could see that it was made up with little bitty people, all of them. We are, you and I, and all of our imperfections, my friends, the bride of Christ. It's all too easy to see all the flaws of the church, all of the disappointments and disabilities of contemporary disciples. We all have those. We're a work in progress, aren't we? You know? And I love the way the New Testament doesn't mind showing the weaknesses, the stupidity and infidelity of Jesus as first disciples. They were people like us. And yet, they were the ones 
who in Jesus' name carried the kingdom out into the world. 2,000 years later, my friends, we are still celebrating and a part of the body of Christ. Unbelievable. William Mullivan, who was a bishop in the United Methodist Church, and in all honesty is one that I have uh, spent a lot of time studying. Anyway, he says uh, one of the worst days of his life as a bishop, he said he, he uh, it had been a grueling eight-hour marathon of nine appointments with complaining clergy all begging me to move them to Birmingham. And when I finally dragged myself before my assistant in order to go home, my heart sank when she said, you've got one more appointment. So in despair, I invited two older women into my office. We've come to Birmingham from Coleman to tell you about our ministry, one said. Gladys' grandson was busted, DUI. We went over to the youth jail to visit him. Sad to say, we'd never been there before. We were appalled by the conditions those young men were packed in there like animals. We got to know them. Are you aware that only 10% can read? The illiterate 19-year-old an illiterate 19-year-old, and we wonder why he's in jail. Well, we began reading classes, the other one said. Sarah taught school before she retired. Then that led to a Bible study group in the evening. We were up to three Bible study groups in a week. Two friends of ours who can't get out and make cookies for the boys, we've also enlisted two wonderful nurses who can help with the, with the VD. Some of them said those cookies are the first gifts they've ever received. Can you imagine that? So, and you want the conference to take responsibility for this ministry, I asked with a rather bureaucratic indifference. No, we don't want you to mess it up, Sarah responded. You need me to come up with some money for you, I persisted rather icily. Don't need any money. If we need something, we get it from our little church, she said. Then why have you come down here to tell me about this, I asked. Well, we know that being a bishop must be one of the most depressing jobs in the church. Too many things that we are not doing that Jesus expects us to do. So Gladys thought it would be nice if we came down here to tell you to take heart. Something's going on, right? That is, up in Coleman. Mormon concluded, that afternoon, the presence of Almighty God was located and incarnate. God among us. I was blindsided by the undeniable fidelity of the people of God. I'm not really worthy to be here, I thought. Perhaps what I should have thought was, without the fidelity of folks like you, I couldn't be here. Imagine. Friends, you and I, ordinary people, with our gifts and graces, we are the kingdom of God and we are the church, the body of Christ, in this time and in this place. I want to invite you to give some prayerful thought to what the Lord is inviting you to do for kingdom work. These are very difficult times that we live in, unusual very unusual. It's a time when the church really needs to make its presence known in a positive, creative, and constructive way. That's what the Lord of life would invite us to do. You know? Give some prayer and some thought to how we individually and together and share the gospel of Jesus, a word of good news with the world around us. I invite hearing from you. Share your story. We need to hear our stories of what God has done, is doing, and will do through us. Amen. My friends, please. Join with me in our closing hymn, Freely, Freely. Oh, forgave my 
My friends, live without fear of the wrath of God. Live in the peace of Christ. Live in the hope of the Spirit. The three persons of the Trinity surround you. The hand of God keep you from all harm. The Spirit of God guide you in all joy. May the Son of God deliver you to eternal life. Go in peace, my friends. Go in peace. I want to just say thank you to our worship team, uh, Angela and Lynn, Manley and Marion and William today. How, what a joy that was. Thank you very much. I want to ask you again, my friends, be safe, stay healthy, do the things that are necessary to protect yourself and your loved ones from this coronavirus. Uh, it's going to take some time, but it will come to an end. We just need to do what's right and responsible for ourselves and for others. Practice your social distancing. Wash your hands often. Pray daily and give thanks to the Lord your God. And I just want to remind you, if you're interested in being a part of a small group, to look at the issues of our country, our time in history, uh, please send me a text. Give me an email. Let's see what we can do and how, if nothing else, we can pray for this land that we love. Go in peace, my friends. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.